Today we're going to talk about eight things that you need to know about Turbo. Hi and welcome to Turbo World, where we make things faster and we fix them to last longer. Today we're going to discuss eight things that you need to know about turbochargers. So let's get started. So temperature is a demon for turbochargers. It can work for you or it can work against you or it can work against you against you against you. <laughs> and let me explain how. When you start your car cold, the oil is cold, the coolant's cold, everything's cold. So the oil's thicker, it doesn't flow as smoothly, and also the fuel maps are changed a little differently to add more fuel as well as the ignition maps are retarded quite a bit so that the car will fire and idle so it can warm up quickly. So you want to remember on a turbocharged vehicle of any kind you want to allow it to run and warm up to normal operating temperature. If you don't allow it to warm up and you try to lead foot it it's not going to go anywhere fast and you're going to cause more harm than good because the lubrication process we discussed the oil isn't getting all the places it needs to get it's not as thin as it needs to be and everything isn't up to operating temperature so the tune isn't there to even make power turbocharged vehicles do not like it absolutely don't like it and you can feel the difference in floor in a cold vehicle and floor in a warm vehicle so don't floor it cold the other thing to remember is shutting it down when it's hot you want to make sure to calm your spirited driving down for the last 10 minutes of your drive or last 5 minutes of your drive. Let air pass across the radiators and the heat exchangers, the brakes, the rotors. You want everything to cool down. The idea of the game is to not let the car sit in heat soak because if you just drive it and park it and shut it off then the temperature is actually going to rise hotter than when you parked it because everything's sitting there getting hot and hotter and hotter. It's heat soaking. Now we want to combat that heat soaking process by cooling it down better. So cool the car off, don't dog it, don't spiritually drive it hard before you get ready to park it. And when you do park it, let it idle for about a minute. Let that turbo spin down. Turbochargers usually spin at 230,000 RPM. 230,000 RPM, that's a lot of spinning per minute. So you want to keep in mind when you turn that key off, that turbo is still spinning real fast from the last time you boosted, and there's no oil. There's no oil to supply to all that friction, that shaft, and then that spinning inside the turbo. So there's no lubrication. So that's when the most damage is done, starting and shutting off. So you want to make sure to lubricate it and keep it lubricated, and make sure to let it idle so that that turbo spins down slowly and slowly and slowly, and then shut it off. That will ensure you a lot longer life of your engine, your vehicle, and your turbo. You will notice when you shut your car down, sometimes when it's really hot and you've really dogged it and you're really in a hurry and you got to go somewhere and you shut it down and you slam a door and you're running to wherever you go, you can hear your car like popping, like just tinks and pops and all kinds of noises of that metal expanding and contracting and getting too hot. That popping also causes oil coking oil coking inside a turbo will stop up lines and cause premature failure of components. Now heat is your enemy and because heat is your enemy I strongly suggest for your turbo vehicle that your first purchase be an EGT gauge. An EGT gauge is an exhaust gas temperature gauge and it tells you how hot your exhaust gas is getting. This will let you know if you're too far over the edge or not when you're driving spiritedly. Another thing you should get is a wideband air fuel gauge. A wideband air fuel gauge tells you how rich or how lean your car is running. In a turbo car, air fuel ratio is very, very important for the life of the vehicle. If you run too low of an air fuel, it'll be too rich and you'll wash the cylinders and you'll end up spinning bearings because you're getting too much gas down in the oil and it's not lubricating anymore. If you run too lean, you end up overheating everything then it gets friction fatigue as well. So air fuel ratio is very important. You want to make sure that you're getting the proper amount of fuel for the proper amount of air. If you don't get the proper amount of fuel for the proper amount of air, you will blow head gaskets. The easiest way to blow a head gasket on any turbo vehicle out there is floor it until it blows up. Seriously, just floor it until it blows up. It don't take long. It might take you, might take you five minutes doing a spirited run and just lay in it and just never let out until it blows. 
turbos will do that. So you need to be aware. Turbos are always creating heat and infinitely creating power, so to speak. So you got to be careful. You got to cool down. Now, having just talked about the heat, let's talk about hot lapping. Now, hot lapping is when you race someone and then you come back around and you race someone else or you race the same person or you keep on going and keep on going and you race, you race, you race, no cool down. Hot lapping is bad for a turbo car because they create so much heat. If you don't have your turbo out of the hood like I do, you're risking it. You're risking it bad. You're risking all the components because everything is heat soaking as you're hot lapping and everything's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. You can't do it. So what I strongly suggest after spirited runs, you do a spirited run, go through a couple gears, maybe 10 seconds or so, and then let off and drive normal for three times the amount of time that you just spent dogging it. That's an easy rule of thumb. So cool down three times longer than you spent flooring it. Allow the car to cool down. When I'm saying, and what do I mean by cool down? Cool down is basically driving at the speed limit, part throttle, and letting air go across all the heat exchangers, letting everything cool back down. If you keep on hot lapping, you will blow a head gasket, and you will warp rotors, and other bad things will occur. So you got to pace yourself. It's just like running. You know, if any of you have ever run and jogged a long race, you got to pace yourself for that race. You can't come out full wide open and expect to be full wide open at the end for that initial burst of power to get past your competitor. You just can't. So you got to pace yourself. So run strong, 10 seconds, and then cool down strong for 30 or a minute. After all, you're going to be the one fixing it. So you might as well make it last, right? In the war of fighting heat, two things help extensively. The first thing is alcohol. An alcohol kit will help your vehicle immensely, especially if you're living in a hot climate like I am where it's hot all the time, the alcohol will drop your manifold air temperatures significantly. Enough to make extra horsepower and be reliable doing it. I strongly suggest you get an alcohol kit for your vehicle. You will be amazed at how much better and how much longer and how much more reliable it is. Not all things are bad to know about turbos. You already know that. Turbos are awesome. They make awesome power and they're easy, easy to adjust to do it. Turbochargers shine in two predominant areas. They shine in elevated areas in the mountains, so if you do a lot of towing, you're going to need a turbo on your equipment. It will help extensively. Turbos also run a lot better with added oxygen in the air. So if you need that extra burst of power, make sure to find a spot in the road where there's trees on both sides and run through it a couple times and see if you feel a difference. I guarantee you will. It's interesting how more oxygen from trees can make cars go a lot faster. Check it out. The last thing I'm going to share with you before we leave today is changing your oil. Changing your oil is very important. It is the blood of your vehicle and the blood of your turbo. If your oil gets gas in it or too much gas in it, then that turbo will die because it can't lubricate itself. There's too much contaminants in the oil. So you want to make sure to change your oil regularly. If you drive your car very spiritedly, a lot, then you need to change it more often so that that gas doesn't stay down in that oil so that your engine lasts longer. If any of these tips have helped you today, please hit that like and subscribe button and hit that bell so you get the information as soon as we come out with it. And you will be able to fix it to last longer and you'll be able to make it faster. Thanks, guys.
and I'm feeling fearless. Exaggerated, that's what you assume. The story's over now, I must conclude. I am conflicted, watching where I step still. Hanging in the balance, not the life I want to live. I want to take it all, standing tall. Fear I'm the person you are.